Hello there, this is a video covering Module 8 to Sample Hypothesis Testing. Previously we looked at only one population mean or one population proportion and we ran a hypothesis test to determine what its value was. Well now we're going to look at two population proportions and compare them and we'll also look at two population means and compare them. So first we'll start off with two proportions. To use the, require, the method we're about to use, the following requirements must hold. You must have proportions from two simple random samples that are independent. <clears throat> and for each of the two samples, the number of successes is at least five and the number of failures is at least five. So you must have at least five of each observation that you're looking at in the samples. <clears throat> so to conduct a hypothesis test for two proportions, we will definitely use Google Sheets. We'll go to the data list tab and we'll go to the region that says two proportion confidence interval p-value and we'll literally type in summary statistics for the two pieces of data or for the for the two populations I should say the two samples we're using so for population one piece of one represents the population proportion for group one or population one n sub 1 means the sample size of group 1, x sub 1 is the number of successes or observations in the sample for a particular characteristic, p hat sub 1 is the sample proportion for group 1, q hat sub 1 is 1 minus p hat sub 1. And so all of those little subscripts of 1 mean these are the, this is the information for population 1. And then the corresponding notations of subscripts 2 represent the information for population 2. So those subscripts are key for organizing your data that you have. So the null hypothesis you use, remember the null hypothesis H0 is always equal to. So we say the proportion for group 1 is equal to the proportion for group 2. <clears throat> and where this P sub 1 equals P sub 2 comes from is remember if there's no difference in two things, if we subtract two things and we get a difference of zero, that means there is no difference. That means the two quantities are equal to each other. That's where the p sub 1 equals p sub 2 comes from. Also, it's always important to write p sub 1 on the left to avoid errors when you're inputting your data into the spreadsheets or whatever technology you're using. And then we'll look at a p-value. We'll compare it to alpha. If the p-value is less than or equal to alpha, then we reject the null hypothesis. So I have 89 undergraduates that were randomly assigned to two groups. They were given a dollar in two different forms, then given the choice to keep the money or buy gum or mints. The claim is that money in large denominations is less likely to be spent than an equal amount of money in smaller denominations. We're going to test the claim at the 0 0.05 significance level. <clears throat> so here I have my information, and the claim is that money in large denominations is less likely to be spent than an equal amount of money in smaller denominations. So I have group 1, this is the group that was given a dollar bill, and then I have group 2, this is the group that was given smaller denominations, four quarters in this case. So when you look at your hypotheses, your null hypothesis is the proportion for group 1 that spent the money is equal to the proportion in group 2 that spent the money. And then your alternative hypothesis is the proportion that spent the money in group 1 is less than the proportion that spent the money in group 2. The larger denominations, the proportion that spent is less likely, so less than the proportion that spent in group 2. <clears throat> and of course our claim is the alternative hypothesis. So literally all I have to do is I go to Google Sheets and I input the number of observations from group 1, which is 12, the sample size from group 1, which is 46, and then for group 2, I'll enter 27 for the number of observations, x2, and then the sample size of 43, and the only other thing that you'll have to input is the alternative hypothesis sign, which is less than. So let's enter those values now in the Google Sheets, and let's get that p-value. So we're going to the data list tab to the two proportion confidence interval p-value region. So for group 1, the people that got the dollar bill, you have 12 out of 46 people that spent the money. In group 2, you had 27 out of 43 people. And change the alternative hypothesis sign to less than. Group 1's proportion is less than group 2's proportion. 
you only care about for a hypothesis test the p-value of 0 0.0002. P-values are typically to four decimal places. 0 0.0002. So my p-value is equal to 0 0.0002. So how does that compare to alpha? How does that compare to our significance level of 0 0.05? Well, 0 0.0002 is clearly less than 0 0.05, so we reject the null hypothesis. So the null hypothesis is rejected. So long. So then since that's rejected, all eyes now point to our alternative hypothesis to our claim, and we say the following. There is sufficient evidence to support the claim that money in large denominations is less likely to be spent than an equal amount of money in smaller denominations. <clears throat> you can also do confidence intervals for two proportions. It's literally going to be the same process except you now have to enter the confidence level into Google Sheets. So for a two-tailed test, the confidence level is always 1 minus alpha. For a left-tailed or a right-tailed test, the confidence level is 1 minus 2 times alpha, because you have those two tails, and you're focused on the middle whatever percentage of data values, or sample mean values, or sample proportion values in this case. <coughs> So like I said, Google Sheets will go to the same spot, and then we'll have to make sure we enter the confidence level. So construct a 90% confidence interval estimate of the difference between the two population proportions in the previous example. So they went ahead and just gave us the confidence level, and that's the easiest way to solve these types of questions, is when they give you the confidence level directly, it's as easy as just literally typing it into Google Sheets. So confidence level is 90% or 0.9, 0 0.90, however you want to do it. So in Google Sheets, all you have to do is go to confidence level and type in 0.9. <clears throat> look at your lower limit, look at your upper limit, and you'll see that you have, we'll do three decimal places, negative 0.528 and negative 0.206. So that's kind of cool. <clears throat> so I had negative point five two eight and then I had negative point two zero six so the interpretation is with confidence level ninety percent the difference between the proportions of the two groups is between negative point five two eight negative point two zero six so also logically zero is not in the interval So a difference likely exists. If two things have a difference of zero, then there is no difference. Nine minus nine is zero. But if zero is not in the interval, a difference likely exists. <clears throat> so now we're going to go through and do a hypothesis test and do a confidence interval and see what we can conclude. So among 450 workers surveyed in a poll, 40% said it was seriously unethical to monitor employee email. Among 120 senior level managers, 30% said that it was seriously unethical to monitor employee email. So we have two groups here. We have the workers, we have the managers. Consider the claim, that's a hypothesis test keyword there, claim that for those saying that monitoring email is seriously unethical, the proportion of workers is the same as the proportion of managers. <clears throat> We're going to use a 0 0.01 significance level. So in this example, I just need to identify who's group one and who's group two first. Group one, let's let those be the workers. And then group two, let those be our managers. <clears throat> All right, so for the hypothesis test, for our hypothesis test. First thing to note would be the hypotheses. The hypotheses would always be for the null, it's always the first group's proportion is equal to the second group's proportion. And in this case, that's actually the claim that was mentioned in the question. 
Remember the alternative is always the exact opposite, so the proportions are not equal to each other. <clears throat> All right, so what your goal is, is you're going to type in the number of observations for group one and the sample size of group one into Google Sheets. So for group one, 40% said it was seriously unethical. Well, how do you find 40% of 450? Our sample size is 450. We need to find 40% of that. Well, 450 times 0.4 is going to give you 180. <clears throat> For group 2, you're going to have 120 times 0.3, because 30% of the managers said it was seriously unethical. And 120 times 0.3 is actually 36. And we already know the sample size for group 2. For the managers, it was 120. There's your information you need for your Google Sheets. So for your interval, for our interval, this is a two-tailed test. Why is it two-tailed? Because the hypothesis uses not equal to. <clears throat> Therefore, my confidence level will be 1 minus my significance level. 1 minus 0 0.01, that's my significance level, so 0.99. Another value we'll type into Google Sheets. Let's go to Google Sheets now and type in this information. Remember, we're on the Daedalus tab in the two proportion confidence interval p-value region. So for my first group, it's important to note that 180 out of 450 thought email was unethical. In group 2, we had 36 out of 120. That's my manager group. <clears throat> Our alternative hypothesis sign was not equal to, and the confidence level was 0.99. Note you have a p-value here, 0 0.0448, and note that you have your confidence interval lower limit and confidence interval upper limit, negative 0 0.023 and 0 0.223. So let's write those answers down now. <clears throat> so our p-value is equal to 0.0. 448, <clears throat> we're going to compare that to alpha. So 0 0.0448, let's compare it to the significance level 0 0.01. 0 0.0448 is actually greater than 0 0.01. Not under that limbo bar, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So we fail to reject our claim in this case. We'll write our statement in just a moment. And for a confidence interval, it's important to note that we got negative 0 0.023, and then we got 0 0.223, which means the following zero is in the interval. So there is no difference in the population proportions. So that's the, the direct interpretation of the interval in terms of answering what can you conclude. So now let's write the hypothesis test summary statement and the confidence interval summary statement. All right, so for the hypothesis test, there is not sufficient evidence to warrant rejection of the claim that the proportion of workers who say monitoring email is seriously unethical is the same as the proportion of managers, and that structure of the statement can be found in the module 7 videos. It's the, the table with four rows, and it shows you sentence structure based on what you do to the null hypothesis and where your claim is located. And for the confidence interval, with confidence level 99%, the difference between the proportion of workers and managers who say monitoring email is seriously unethical is between negative 0 0.023 and 0 0.223. If you want to write these down, feel free to pause the video. Lastly, looking at seat belts, a simple random sample of front seat occupants involved in car crashes is obtained. Among 2823 or 2823 occupants not wearing a seat belt, 31 were killed, and among 7,765 occupants wearing seat belts, only 16 were killed. 
Let's use a 0.05 significance level to test a claim that seatbelts are effective in reducing fatalities. All right, so let's look at the hypothesis test. <clears throat> After I identify who's my group one and who's my group two. So group one is actually going to be those that were wearing no seatbelt. So it's the proportion of deaths of those that were not wearing a seatbelt. And group two will be those that wore a seatbelt. Literally, I just labeled them in the order which the question presented the groups. So for my test, I'm looking at my claim of seatbelts are effective in reducing fatalities. So what that would mean is the following. If seatbelts were effective, then the proportion of people that died from not wearing a seatbelt would be much greater than the proportion that died from wearing a seatbelt. So the no seatbelt deaths will be more than the seatbelt wearer deaths. So this actually goes with my alternative hypothesis because it contains greater than. And remember the null is always going to be equal to. And you always write group one on the left to avoid mixing up your data and typing it in the wrong spots for the wrong group. All right, so my claim is going to be the alternative hypothesis. <laughs> That's what they described in the question. All right, so now on Google Sheets, X1 and N1, X2 and N2. All right, so in group one out of 2,823 occupants, 31 were killed. That's my non-seatbelt wearers. In group two, out of 7,765 people, we had 16 that were killed. And your H1 sign is greater than. We'll type that into Google Sheets. All right, so now my interval, my confidence interval. <clears throat> this is a one-tailed test. Therefore, my confidence level will be 1 minus 2 times your significance level. 1 minus 2 times 0 0.05. So it's going to be 0 0.9. That's what we need for Google Sheets. Highlighted all the important information. Let's now type it into the Google Sheets spreadsheet. All right, so what I'm going to do in my box is I'm going to type in I had 31 out of 2,823 people in group 1 that died, and then I had 16 out of 7,765 in group 2. My sign should be greater than, and my confidence level is going to be 0 0.90 or 0 0.9. Note that your p-value is basically 0, and then you have your lower bound and upper bound of your confidence interval. So we'll type these bits of information here. So my p-value is basically 0, and when you compare 0 to the significance level alpha, it's definitely less than. So that means we do reject the null hypothesis. So that means we can cross up the null hypothesis, and all eyes now point to our claim. There is evidence to support our claim. We'll write the statement in a minute. And then in terms of your confidence interval, you had 0 0.006, comma, 0 0.012. <clears throat> so 0 is not in the interval. So there is a difference in the proportions. So here is the hypothesis statement and the confidence interval statement. There is sufficient evidence to support the claim that seatbelts are effective in reducing fatalities. And the confidence interval statement is, with confidence level 90%, the difference between the proportion of deaths from not wearing seatbelts and wearing seatbelts is between 0 0.006 and 0 0.012. Remember, when 0 is not in the interval, that suggests that there is a difference in the proportions. So anyway, that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching.